Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days is very unsettled as we head into the weekend for we do see higher pressure start to move in perhaps into the early parts of next week however at least initially it looks like it's going to be accompanied by an easterly or northerly flow which will mean those temperatures will be on the downwards trend back towards average if not below low average with the potential on some of the runs of seeing a bit of frost in the places now we'll have a look at the longer range look at the gfs gm east and wf and the ensembles as we head into april and the signal for higher pressure does continue we have alluded to the last few days that there is the potential for seeing some quite cold air drifting in from the north or the east but we're starting to see a bit of a split in the ensembles and general operational runs for uh, how warm or how cold the higher pressure will be as we'll see towards the end of the video at those ensembles there are some going quite warm a few degrees above average which will have more of a southerly flow others a few degrees below average with more of a northerly or easterly flow and it's all to do with the position of the higher pressure i'm pretty sure most of these ensemble members and ru operational runs are pretty sure now we will see higher pressure building in it's just where will the wind direction come from as the south it's starting to get warmer so we could even see mid to high teens or even 20 degrees if we saw some sort of a southerly flow but still colder air is lingering to our north and our east and then we can still see something quite chilly into april if we did see that sort of flow so explore what that is showing in in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in description so to start on the live radar you can see the very unsettled picture we have at the moment we've got heavier rain in batches drifting northwards and eastwards through uh, many areas at the moment we've got an area of rain through parts of the east midlands and east anglia a big uh, area of rain stretching from Scotland down through Wales and into southwestern parts. Quite heavy along this, but it should move through quite quickly. And just elsewhere, just other batches of rain, including northern Scotland as well. There's another area of rain that we'll see in the UKV in a minute that is tracking from the southwest to northeastwards this evening and overnight. And it's looking really quite heavy. Luckily, again, falling mostly overnight. But where it does occur, we can see a lot of water falling uh, on the ground in, in a very short space of time it does look like quite a torrential feature so we'll have to see what happens with that overnight no warnings issued for it as it does as it does move through quite quickly but it does look quite a quite a severe little system there again if that was more in the summer we'd be thinking some big thunderstorms associated with, associated with that as we've got some really bright colors appearing on the precipitation charts and if you look at the temperatures it's generally quite a mild day that wind direction coming in from the southwest is around half one at the moment and you can see widespread yellows developing again that is low to maybe even mid-teens in a few spots 15 or 16 degrees possible we see dry conditions and maybe the sunshine breaking through you can see it's up and down the country even over the highlands of scotland not seeing particularly cold conditions perhaps mid to high single digits there so not too bad but as i said with that high pressure building in later uh, next week into early april you can see how if you look to our north and our east across scandinavia it is still very cold look freezing conditions still there but across southern france and spain getting up towards the mid 20s or even high 20s touching 30 degrees and that is uh, that's just showing you if we saw a southerly wind we see those sort of conditions wafting our way we see a northerly or easterly wind we'd start to see the colder conditions and that's why we've got a lot of uncertainty with the exact conditions towards the end of the month because we've got two very big contrasting air masses um, that we always see in early to mid spring um, but with the exact position of the higher pressure it could bring either one our way now if you look at the UKV now, look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, you can see that rain spreading through at the moment should clear most areas. And then we look out to the southwest, this real heavy, vigorous area of rain with those reds appearing within it, so torrential rainfall, maybe even some thundery rain developing within this again really impacting central areas overnight but could impact southwestern areas as early as sort of 5 6 p.m so really quite heavy as that does move in 
It should clear by for most areas into the morning and then to tomorrow. No big batches of precipitation, but a lot of heavy, maybe thundery showers. And then we see this quite vigorous low pressure system move in for Thursday into Friday. Again, giving heavier rain in places, some gusty winds. Doesn't look quite as intense as it did earlier this week, for it does clear through Thursday night into Friday. So quite a big low pressure system there, and it does have its weather front lingering all the way into Saturday as well. So it doesn't look like it's going to be too heavy in terms of rain there, but it could be quite miserable with that sort of on and off light to moderate rain for a good 12 to 24 hours there, every parts of the Midlands, central southern England, stretching to northern England and Scotland. Then as we head into early April, we do start to see dry conditions prevailing with high pressure building in. You can see that from the mean sea level pressure here generally high pressure building in especially to our north and our east and that's why we could think that there could be a bit of an easterly flow developing you can look at the upper air temperatures cooler air to our north and east milder air to our south and our west contrasting air masses and that's why we're unsure exactly what the temperatures could be into early to mid april definitely does look like it's going to be dry that's one encouraging thing now, if you look at the max temperatures you can see through this afternoon temperatures peaking around that 13 14 degree mark, maybe 15 or 16 across the Republic of Ireland, where it is slightly drier and sunnier. As we, as we progress into Thursday, again, you can see perhaps, once again, 15 to 17 degrees across parts of East Anglia. Really quite pleasant there, but of course it's associated with some heavy thundery showers. So it'd be nice if you avoid those showers, a bit of sunshine won't be all too nice if you see those heavier showers. Into Friday, those temperatures will probably be held down a bit. You can see that, yeah, 10 to 14 degrees uh, as we've got more cloud, rain and wind around. And then as we do progress into Saturday, cooler through northern and eastern areas. We've got that rain band sitting over the top of us and at least the remnants of that before it does clear away. But 13, 14 degrees, once again, the top temperature. And then finally into Sunday. Again, cooling down a little bit, especially towards the east coast. We start to have a bit more of an easterly flow, maybe high single digits there. But elsewhere, again, 10 to 14. 14 degrees. So nothing hugely cold coming up, but perhaps trending slightly cooler, more towards average, or maybe even below average in a few spots. But again, all dependent on the exact air mass and wind direction. Now, if you look at the latest GFS and see what they're showing over the course of the next couple of weeks, you can see the southwesterly wind coming in at the moment. It has that low pressure system moves through Thursday into Friday and lingers before it clears into Europe by the weekend. And then we see a bit of an easterly flow, the high pressure building in. It's coming under strain from low pressure systems, but into the middle of the week it does strengthen and it does have more of a westerly flow to it. So this would actually be slightly milder, but perhaps slightly more unsettled in the north. Eventually the high pressure gets really going uh, in around 7 to 10 days time over the top of us. And again, this is where the uncertainty is. If it's slightly further eastwards and northwards, drag up a southerly wind that's slightly further northwards and westwards, then we would start, uh, start to push in an easterly flow. And here, it's a slight easterly flow, but nothing amazingly cold. You've got the upper air temperatures sort of touch and go, but it gets into that warmer air or that cold air further northwards and eastwards up towards Scandinavia. And right into the longer range, we do actually start to drag in a proper north to northeasterly, or sorry, east to northeasterly there, um, which would pull in reasonably cold air, nothing crazy cold, but generally below average for the time of year. Pool of sort of four degrees below average there. So chilly, but nothing especially cold as we do progress into the middle of April. Sort of touch and go. Periods of cooler and periods of warm air masses as well appearing there over the course of the next couple of weeks. Perhaps more inclined for those warmer air masses, but again, all dependent on that exact wind direction as it is very much touch and go where we go here. Definitely, GFS is on the warmer side of those ensemble numbers, dragging more southerly or westerly air masses into that higher pressure than northerly or easterly winds. If you look at the GM now, you can see, again, that southwesterly flow coming in at the moment. Low pressure gets dragged in, and we start to see a bit of an easterly flow develop there, but nothing too substantial. And then towards day 10, once again, the high pressure is further northwards and eastwards, not pulling in sort of a direct northeasterly or easterly, but a slight easterly flow, again, very uncertain, like 100, 200 miles there between cooler continental air and milder sort of southern or mid-Atlantic air getting dragged up. So again, very much touch and go uh, what sort of conditions we do see here. Very subtle differences in the air masses here. Can give very big differences at the surface. So we'll just have to see 
how it does develop because here Poland minus 10 ice uh, minus 10 air is over Scandinavia and again if we did see that northeasterly door open then we could go much colder but equally if we saw the southerly wind develop then it would go a lot warmer if we look at the ECMWF you can see again we've got that southwesterly flow coming in low pressure moving in we start to see a bit of an easterly flow and into the longer term definitely more in kind of that easterly wind than more of a southerly perhaps if we see here it's early next week we could see milder air mass for a time but look a lot more in those greens as we head towards day seven and day ten again nothing ridiculously cold not really getting the minus five isotherm in but definitely cooler than average a lot of blues appearing there especially in the longer term there are some very cold air masses to our east but we don't fully drag them in so we will just have to see what happens with that uh, especially as we head into uh, the second week of april now if you finish by looking at the ensembles you can see here the united states 1 2010 mean line is a little bit off so i wouldn't look at that in too much detail but you can generally see warmer than average at the moment quite mild trending average to below average as we start to put a bit of it easterly in next week and then we see the sort of split starting to appear as we head to run towards sort of the 5th to 8th of april majority of the ensemble members are around zero degrees at 850 hpa for a good few days there and then we see a bit of a split as i said we've got half perhaps going towards five degrees or at least above freezing at 850 hpa including the operational run then we've got more uh, what, again another split of about maybe half going below zero and some even down to the minus five region again those would be cooler on summer members so it's this big sort of deviation here very similar overall pattern we've got good agreement that there will be high pressure in play you can see that by low precipitation amounts but it's the uncertainty in what the exact air mass will be and where the wind direction will be coming from again that split will be very well shown on the dew points here some really cold dew points some very mild dew points almost a 15 to 10 20 degree uh, contrast temperature contrast in those dew points from maybe some getting towards 10 or 11 others getting down to sort of minus 6 to minus 8 or even slightly lower at times um, so yeah just showing you the contrast in, in air masses and it will show a big difference in the two meter temperatures as we head to, to uh, the April if we use the 8th for example you can see some 15 to 18 degrees others 10 to 12 or even lower and again 10 to 12 doesn't sound all too cold but it's a good few degrees below average from what we'd expect where we expect mid-teens for the daytime high and of course the lows overnight will be cooler as well probably down to the mid to low single digits now if you compare it finally to the ecmwf perhaps definitely here on more of a cooler trend so ecmwf on some members definitely looking more at that high pressure burden northwards pulling in an easterly flow you can see here if you if you extrapolate the 1981-2010 meaning nor where it's just uh had this straight period definitely looks like uh, for some reason the data is incomplete there but if you do extrapolate it as roughly being around zero you can see in the majority are below average and the ensemble mean is below average so looking pretty chilly high pressure dominated and pretty chilly some more precipitation spikes here again there are more ensemble members but of course with an easterly flow there's a potential for some troughs moving in from off the North Sea and that could have some showery development. So that's why there will be some more precipitation associated with that. Definitely though, looking quite a bit cooler here from the east of the as we head into early April. If we look at the two meter temperatures, again, it's very much struggling to get much above 10 degrees here. Again, if we go to around the 8th, the majority of ensemble members are below 10 degrees, with some even as low as 5 or 6. Again, we're not expecting ridiculously cold air mass, we're just expecting chilly, easterly flow. Uh, and you can see what this is producing on this latest ECMWF ensemble runs. Now again, I wouldn't take any of these individual operational runs or ensemble spectrum as gospel. The ECMWF ensemble members are sometimes right, the GFS ensemble members are sometimes right, and we will just have to see where it does prevail here. There is very, as I said, very good consensus from the majority of the models of what we will be seeing, which is higher pressure, just differences on the exact wind direction. So if you are looking for something warmer and drier, there is perhaps glimpses, maybe around that 5th to 10th of April point or beyond. If we saw that high pressure build over the top of us with more of a southerly injection of air, but I definitely would sway more towards that cooler pattern as about 50% of the GFS ensemble members are going for it and the majority of the ECMWF ensemble members are going for it. And traditionally, many would argue that the ECMWF is a better run historically than the other runs we do look at. So always 
might sway more towards the ECMWF in these sort of scenarios, especially as it's got a lot of ensemble support and support within the GFS ensembles as well. So we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks, but could continue this sort of chillier outlook. Again, March is generally average, maybe slightly above average in the grand scheme of things uh, when we come out to the CET, but remember, that is the actual temperature, not what the sort of month has felt like. We've seen no really warm or dry conditions. Whenever we do see those warmer temperatures, it's always been associated with big uh, weather fronts and big warm air masses with a lot of cloud and rain. So the actual feel-like temperature of the month does feel like it's been a cold month, even though statistically it's been generally average to maybe slightly above average. Uh, and that's looking like it's going to continue into early April, looking generally cool and not particularly great for any warmer uh, weather, really. One encouraging thing, I must say, though, is it is looking a little bit dry. Of course, there could be some troughs and some showers in from the east, but no huge weather fronts if we did see higher pressure dominate, which is looking quite a likely scenario. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.